Stay with us, Iris. I want to cross 60 kilometres from you, go to Tel Aviv. I want to bring in Maya Roman. Maya, thank you for talking to us here on France 24. Uh, your cousin, Yarden Roman Gat, was held hostage for 54 days. I know, Maya, you have another family member still held by Hamas in uh, Gaza. This is 39 year old Carmel Gat. The news today of the evacuations from Rafa, the operation going on. Let's start with your thoughts uh, and how you view these developments. Um, we are very concerned. <clears throat> you know, the families, we've been at this for over six months and we've seen negotiations go well and not go well. Um, we were very hopeful. Uh, it seemed like the negotiation was going strong uh, a couple of days ago. And now to see things blow up is um, is quite a blow to the families, especially on this day where a lot of us are descendants of Holocaust survivors. So it's it's a tough day for us generally. And, and knowing that our loved ones aren't here and we don't know if they're coming back makes it even harder. Um, the you know we we were quite optimistic. Uh, it seemed as though. Uh, our government and uh, Hamas were able to try and, and find some uh, middle ground. And then uh, both we saw this uh, attack from Rafah uh, and uh, our government's insistence that we must go in. And both of these developments are, are very bad for us and for the hostages. And um, we are still trying to fight to make sure that people go back to the negotiation table and not give up. Uh, on our loved ones who have been there for over six months and um, we don't know what they've been going through. When you listen to the government continued narrative from Benjamin Netanyahu, from spokespeople, people like Mark Regev, who say, without pressing, without the offensive, we wouldn't have seen the first truce happen. Their argument is by putting on um, a solid, hard, pressured military offensive, that's forcing Hamas to the table. Where do you stand on that argument? I think it's true to some degree. I think that uh, we did see that the initial military pressure was very crucial in getting the first hostage deal. Uh, I don't think there are a lot of people who can um, object to that. We saw that the pressure was very crucial in making sure the hostages were not taken outside of Gaza and in making sure that Hamas and Sinwar are willing to come to the table because this is a terror organization. Uh, Sinwar, you know, is known as the butcher from Khan Yunus, is a very cruel person. He does not care about the lives of his people. He doesn't care about the lives of our people. And so I do believe the military pressure has some role to play. Uh, however, I think we're in a different situation right now, six months afterwards, uh, partly because of the international pressure um, to, uh, to give up the war. And uh, again, Sinwar and Hamas are seeing this and are aware of this. So the, the military pressure, it plays a role, but it can't be the only pressure point that we're using. And at this point in time, uh, though I'm not an expert in the field, it seems as though um, it's time to to try something else. Uh, we're not sure that going into Rafah is going to help bring back our loved ones alive. Um, at the same time, we're dealing with an irrational terrorist organization, so it's very hard to know what will work best. Um, yeah. Yeah. Can I ask about your personal situation? Because your family, it was devastating what happened at Kibbutz Biari. You had a family member killed. You had one, well, your cousin, uh, Yarden, she was released after 54 days. And now Carmel, a 39-year-old yoga instructor, uh, who I believe was visiting the kibbutz at the time, she's still held. Do you have any idea from a proof of life of how she might be, the situation? Um, the last we know of Carmel is f during the initial hostage deal. Two teenagers who were released told us they were held with her. Um, and so they were able to tell us that she is alive. Um, however, they also told us that they were held under quite difficult physical conditions that they experienced uh, some abuse and um, they told us that Carmel helped them she taught them yoga she taught them meditation mm -hmm. uh, she made them keep a journal she really helped them 
you know, keep their mental health and, and, and be able to survive what was happening to them. Uh, and then during the first deal, uh, they were released, they were taken out. They didn't know that they were being taken to be released and she didn't know that as well. Um, and so they were just taken and she was left there alone. Um, so we are, we're very worried. Um, again, we're very grateful to know that she was alive and that she was herself that she was helping people. She's a caretaker. She's, I'm sure it helped her to have those uh, teenagers there to, to help them. Um, and the thought of her alone as one of the last remaining women in captivity for so long is really devastating. You know, Yarden, who came back, told us and keeps telling us how hard just mentally the experience is of, and she was just just there for two months and, and she's still dealing with the ramifications of being watched 24 seven and having no agency and no control and no idea if someone is going to attack you or what they're going to do to you for so long, it really stays with you. And so when we think about what Carmel has gone through for the past six months, um, it's devastating and, um, you know, it's going to be her 40th birthday uh, on the 16th of May. Um, and we were all praying that she will be here by then. Um, and right now it doesn't seem very hopeful that she will. Um, and so, yeah, it's very it's very hard, but we're trying to, to stay strong and do everything we can to make sure people don't forget her and uh, help us bring them all home. Does it give you any more hope that perhaps she may have been or be amongst the 33, around roughly a third of the hostages that, according to the leaked document of the draft potential ceasefire deal, they would be released. Perhaps Comel could be amongst them. How do you see those talks at the moment? Do you, do you have hopes that they could succeed despite this on and off difficulties of them? Of course, you know, we, even during the first initial talks, we knew that Yarden, for example, uh, was not meant to be among those released first. And still we were for the deal uh, because we feel that even an incremental deal is the best way forward. It's been the best way to release uh, the most hostages so far. And so we feel that that's the only way to go forward. Of course, uh, we're hoping that Carmel will be among the first 33 released, but also we are in this fight for the for the families, for the hostages, and we are in it until every single one comes back. We have all become extremely close, all of us um, family members. And so we're in this, even if Carmel comes back first, uh, until every last one is back, we do believe the best way to do that is through uh, a deal and through starting uh, with the humanitarian deal and then uh, continuing with the rest of the steps of the deal. I still hope that we can that it can be achieved, but it will require pressure on both Hamas and our government. And we are working in, in every arena to make sure that we that we do everything we can. Maya, Iris Mackler is listening. Well, very briefly, Iris, for the time that we have, um, just to put, put us into the picture of where we are with the talks and, you know, have, are they over? Have they stumbled and stalled? It depends who you listen to. Um, I have heard both views. Yes, they've stumbled. Uh, no, they haven't. And then there's a blame game starting. Hamas saying it's Israel's fault. Israel saying it's obviously Hamas's fault. Everybody obviously blaming the other. Uh, I have to say one thing about Benjamin Netanyahu. If you're a political leader uh, in a democracy, not a dictatorship, and you're in a war, you must have the trust of the people that you're acting in their best interests. And now, after six months of this war, we see an increasing number of people not satisfied. Iris, great to talk to you. Iris Mackler, our correspondent. And Maya, thank you so much for speaking to us here on France 24. Ryan, uh, Maya Roman, we hope to speak to you again with better news ahead. Stay with us here on France 24. We'll be back in just a moment.